Mr. AI's code still is out. And as always, Mr. AI did not disappoint us with their new model. If you scroll down on their page, they claim that this model is fluent in over 80 plus programming languages, which include all the popular languages like Python, Java, C, C++, JavaScript, and much more. And if you go a bit down, they give you the benchmark. And if I zoom in a bit, as we can see that Codestrel is ranking on top, beating Code Llama, DeepSea Coder, as well as Llama 3, with a larger context length of 32K. And that's not all. If you scroll down, they claim that it is best in Python, but they have different benchmarks for all the popular languages out there, like Python, there's C++, there's Bash, Java, and all other languages, which is quite amazing. But that's not all. You can actually download this and use this for free as it is an open beat model. But of course, it is a non-production license, which means you can only use this for research and testing purposes. But if you want to use it commercially, you can apply for a license by reaching out to them. And you can download this from Hugging Face right here. If you go to the link, you will be landing on this page here where you can install this and integrate this inside your existing project. But what we're going to do today is we're going to use this inside BS Code using continue.dev. It is an extension which lets you run different models locally as well as using their API keys. We're going to go and run this locally in our VS Code and test out and confirm whether all these benchmarks are true as they claim. And one more thing that I want to mention here is that if you go to the Olamas library and if you search for Mistral here, you can see that the Mistral Scored Trail model is not yet available on Olama, which means you cannot download this locally using Olama and run this with continue.dev. But don't worry, we can go on and actually create an account with Mistral and get the free Codestrel API, which we can integrate in continue.dev and then use it. So that was all about Mistral. Now let's talk about what we're going to do. So that was all about Mistral. Now let's talk about the resources that we're going to use. We're going to use continue.dev. We're going to use the continue extension in VS Code, as well as we're going to use Itabit to get coding questions to test out the capabilities of our code still model as well as we're going to go and compare it with black box yet another amazing ai tool as well as the model that is backing it up which is on top beating chat gpt4 3.5 this cloud 2 grok 1 and much more so we're going to go and see which one is performing better so i'm going to go and so i'm going to go and paste the same questions right here inside black box as well as on the Mistral's code shell model and check out which one performs better. So that is enough with the theory. Let's actually get started and open up our VS Code and get started with this. So here on my VS Code, the first thing that we need to have is this continue extension. For that, all you have to do is go to the marketplace and search for continue. And after that, just install it. Once you're done installing it, you will see something like this where you can add your code shell model. I've already added my code shell model, but let me demonstrate how you can do it. So all you have to do is click on this plus icon here, then scroll down all the way to the provider that you want. So I bought Mistral because code shell is a Mistral's model. After that, I'm going to paste in the API key from the Mistral's dashboard. And that's all you need to do and your model will be configured. So now with that said, and our continue dev already configured, what we need is to start testing it out. So I'm going to go and do a split screen so we can see the results of black box as well as in the same display. Now here at Itabit, I'm gonna go and select Python. After that, I'm gonna go and start with an easy challenge. So let's go and copy any of the questions from here. Let's go with this one. I'm gonna go and copy the question. Let's go back to our VS Code. I'm gonna go and hit Control L. This will open up the continue chat. And here I'm gonna go and paste in the question. And the same question I'm gonna paste in inside the black box AI. Let's go and hit enter. Now, as we can see, the results are out. So let's actually go and test out whether the results are accurate or not. So I'm gonna go and copy the code stroll result first. And here on Itabit, I'm gonna go to code. Let's go and paste in the result and check whether it performs well or not. And there you go, code stroll passed the test. Now let's go back to black box and I'm going to go and copy the result from here. So back here on Itabit, I'm gonna paste in the results from black box AI. And let's go and check whether we pass the test or not. So as you can see, both of the models, Black Box as well as Code Trail, passes the test for the easy challenge. Now let's increase the intensity for the challenge. 
So for the second test, this time I'm going to go and increase the intensity to hard. After that, let's go and choose any of these questions. So this time I'm going to go and choose this question here. So let's go and copy the question. Let's go back to our editor. Here I'm going to go and paste the question for both of the modules. And the results are out. Back here at Itabit, I'm going to go to code. I'm going to paste in the results here. Let's see how CodeShell performs. As we can see, CodeShell actually passes the hard challenge for Python. Let's go and check out how Blackbox performs. So I'm going to go and copy the code, paste it right here. Let's go and check out the output. And as you can see, Blackbox passed the hard challenge as well. Now for the next challenge, I'm going to go and increase the intensity to very hard. Let's go and select one of these questions. So I'm going to go with this one. Let's copy the question here. Let's go back to our editor. The results are out, so let's go and test out the results. Back at Adabit, let's go to code and paste in the results here. Let's check whether the code works or not. So as you can see, as soon as we increase the intensity, we pass three tests, but then we fail the last test and there is an error, which means that we still need improvement in code so and it is not 100% accurate. Let's go back to black box and see how many tests it passes. So let's go and paste the black box code here. Let's go and check out the results. So as we can see, black box did not even pass a single test, whereas code still passes the first three tests and then fails on the fourth test, which means that code still still outperforms black box and indeed their claims are true. So in total, code still has three points while black box has two points. So the winner is of course code still now, that was just a comparison between two coding modules. But what if I want to work with CoreStrel inside my editor? So now we're going to go and see how we can work with CoreStrel inside our editor and how it can be an alternative to paid tools like GitHub Copilot. So let's go back to our editor. So back here on my editor, I'm going to go and open up a new chat as well as I'm going to go in the test file. And here I'm going to start your reading code using CoreStrel. So for that, you will have to hit Ctrl plus L if you're on window. And if you're on Mac, you will have to go with Command plus L. As soon as you hit it, you will see the continue chat here. So you can ask it to generate pretty much anything. So I'm going to go start really basic with the sorting algorithm. So I'm going to go with bubble sort, a quite common sorting algorithm. So I'm going to go with write the code for bubble sort. And there you go. Now, all you have to do is just click on insert and it will insert the code inside the file which is active right now. After that, let's save and check out the results. So as you can see, it actually went on and sorted the array in ascending order. But what if I want to change the name of the method? So you can actually edit this on the go. All I have to do is just select all of this. Then I have to press Ctrl I or Command I on Mac. And then I will have to describe the tweak that I want in my code. So let's say I want to change the method's name. So I'm going to go and say, change the method name to bubbling sort. Let's go and check out the results. So as you can see, this is a difference view. The red one is the old code and the green one is the new code. As soon as you accept all, it's going to go and show you the results. And if you save this and check out the results, it is working completely fine even now. So this is how you can edit your code on the go using this amazing tool. So that was not all. You can even use autocomplete, one of the major features that all the AI peer programming tools out there have, as well as the paid tools like GitHub Copilot. So I'm going to go and say array. And as soon as you start typing, you will see suggestions. All you have to do is press tab and you will accept all the suggestions. So this is how you can use continuing.dev plus CodeStrel and build your own free GitHub Copilot for yourself. No more need to pay subscription money to paid AI coding assistance. And that is not all. We can even go on and induce a bug here. So let's say I'm going to go and induce a few bugs here like this. And then I will select the whole code, Control I, and I'm going to go and say fix the bugs in the code. And there you go. It will fix the bugs for you as soon as you accept all the bugs are gone. Now you can save and you can check out the results. It is still working completely fine. So this is how you can fix your bugs, do auto completion, enter natural language prompts and get your code as well as edit your code on the go. These are all the functionalities you can get in any paid AI peer programming tool. So with that said, so with that said, that wraps up our video for today. 
we went on and explored how good CodeShell is and we verified the claims in the benchmark stats that they have given on their web page as well as we went on and explored how we can use it inside continue.dev and we compared it with another amazing coding model and that's not all we even discussed how we can host it locally on our machine once Olama library has code show but for now you can use it for free using their api over at mistral's dashboard as well as from the hugging face space so that was all about code show. i hope this video was valuable if you found this video insightful hit the like button share your thoughts or experiences in the comments below ring the notification bell to never miss out on our daily updates thanks for watching and we'll see you in our next video where we continue to curb your skills with the latest tech till then stay curious and keep exploring